All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about pedigrees. Pedigrees are a, it's kind of like a family tree, but it's a family tree of traits. So not just like who, mom is who, dad is who, but it's here's the parents and here's the traits that we're looking at. So this is a slide presentation. It's linked in Canvas. Um, I don't have a guided note sheet. I can go. There is a guided note sheet to go along with it, but I'm not going to ask you to fill it out. Okay. So I'm just going to use it as kind of a way to introduce pedigrees, and then we're going to start working through some pedigrees. So a pedigree is, like I said, kind of a family tree, but it's not like who's married to who or whatever. But it's we're looking for genetic traits, and there's three different modes of genetic traits that we can be looking at. And depending upon what the mode is in question, or the trait is in question, there's different modes of inheritance that it could be. So when we look at pedigrees, we often are talking about does the pedigree work or not. We're not trying to find out is mom really mom, is dad really dad. We're trying to figure out is the trait in question, because like you have a trait, your parents have a particular trait, is that trait that we're talking about? What mode of inheritance might it be? That's what we're looking at when we look at pedigrees. Um, so there's some important things that we should know about pedigrees. And it's a way that we can trace traits um, like sex-linked recessive, hemophilia, color blindness, Huntington's disease, lots of different things. Sometimes when we are talking about pedigrees, we sometimes see some boxes that are half-shaded Sometimes, not a lot. I don't use that notation much myself, but sometimes we will see that. But some important things is we have, there's symbols that mean something and you're gonna have to just know what the symbols are. So this is a male, squares are males, and circles are females. Square, male, circle, female, okay? So what this is, it shows multiple generations throughout uh, this is three different generations. So what we have is we have a male and a female who have some children. So what they refer to this is, is they refer to this connection between these two, this male and female, a marriage line. Okay? Now, really, it's not really representing marriage, it's representing having kids. So it's really more like they made it, they had children together, right? Not necessarily marriage, but we often for kind of ease of explanation, we often talk about those two are married, their husband and wife, their mom and dad, and they have children who call them mom and dad. It's, okay, so it's, it's, they, it represents that they had children, and the children they have are connected to that line. So how many children did this couple have? They had four. There's the first, there, there's the second, there's the third, there's the fourth. Did, is this individual the child of these two? Is this circle, female, is this female connected directly to these two? No, okay? So the, there, this is part of the, the pedigree, part of the family tree, but this is not a direct biological descendant, not blood related to these two, okay? So these two have one, two, three, four children. And then, for example, these two have one, two children. Okay, so if we were to, if this is a first generation, second generation, third generation. What do these two individuals call these two individuals? What do these boy, girl call these two boy, girl? Grandma and grandpa, and they call these two mom and dad, okay? So these two are the children of these two, so mom and dad, and then these two are the grandchildren of these two, so grandma and grandpa. So if that's, if these two are the grandchildren of these two, then these two would call these two aunt and uncle, right? And they, these three would call these two cousins, okay? What does this, female call these two individuals? No, not step. In-law, right? So this is the son of these two. This daughter, or this female married, married, this 
male, who's the son of this, so this is the daughter-in-law. This is the son-in-law. Okay? It shows relationships. It doesn't show age, it shows generations. Because is it possible, is it possible that this female be the same age as this male? Yeah, right? You could be the same age as your aunt or uncle. It's possible, right? Your grandparents would have had a kid at the same time that your parents had a kid. It's possible. Okay, so this doesn't show age, it shows generations. And it's something to keep in mind. So when we go through and we look at pedigrees, circles and squares, that's important. And then we look at traits. And the traits in question are shaded. So how many people on that pedigree have the trait, whatever the heck trait it is, have the trait in question? So, how many of those individuals have the trait, whatever the trait may be? Three. There's three shaded squares and circles. There's three people that have whatever trait we're talking about. Sometimes they use Roman numerals to represent generations, and sometimes they use numbers to represent children of that generation or individuals within that generation. So then the idea is we can go through and say, hey, in generation two, that's Roman numeral two, that's line number two, we can talk about individual number four. It's just a way to identify. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Okay? Uh, oh, that's an interesting kind of trick. Um, so when we go through, again, things to keep in mind, squares, I say this a lot because it's important, squares are males, circles are females. The shaded ones are what we refer to as affected. They're affected by the trait that we're looking at. Whatever that trait may be, they have the trait. Whatever trait it may be. So if it's a male who has the trait, or if they are shaded in, if they're female, they are a circle shaded in. Sometimes we see them as a carrier, we have shade. Sometimes we have shade, we don't always have shade. But the idea is some traits can be, you can have a carrier, remember a carrier is an individual who carries on, carries the trait on to the next generation but doesn't necessarily have the trait in question. Okay, so a carrier doesn't have the trait but they're carrying it. They have a, a version. There's a few times that we'll see something like this and this is to show identical twins. It's just kind of showing that um, these two are genetically identical too. So these, have, this one has a trait, then guaranteed this one has a trait because they're genetically identical. Non-identical twins, sometimes they'll denote them. It's really not that critical to know that they're fraternal twins because genetically this son and, son and daughter, brother and sister, I should say, brother and sister, are genetically just as similar as these two son and daughters, brother and sister. They're just were born at the same time. So sometimes we see that, again, this is referred to as like a marriage line, which represents that they had children or mating. Okay, carriers. Um, and then when we go through and we look at modes of inheritance, there's three types of inheritance. There's three types of inheritance. So there's autosomal dominant, there's autosomal recessive, and there's sex. Limit. So depending upon which mode of inheritance depends upon how things are going to get passed up. So we're going to use letters A for autosomal, um, big A's and little A's. And the idea, if they have the dominant trait, they have at least one dominant allele. They have at least one dominant allele if it's a dominant trait. An example is Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant trait. It's a trait that if you have the trait of dominant allele, you will have the trait. Huntington's disease is a deadly disease that if you have, it's going to kill you. I have to look it up in the past. So maybe, maybe I should take a step back. Historically, it's, it's a fatal diagnosis. Um, maybe we're better with tech, uh, medicine nowadays. I'm not sure. Uh, but in the past it was. And it's right around the mid-30s, I think, is when the symptoms kick in and then that person unfortunately dies. So 
how does a trait that kills you get passed on to the next generation? And the idea is it's a dominant trait, so if you have the dominant allele, you're going to have this dominant trait. But most people who have Huntington's disease probably don't know they have Huntington's disease when they have children. Because if it doesn't kick in until like the mid-30s, once you're in your mid-30s, if you were going to have a family, you may have already started having a family. So, it's an example of one. It's a dominant trait, doesn't mean dominant, doesn't mean common, dominant just means it's dominant. That's all that means. So, in a dominant, autosomal dominant trait, males versus female are equally uh, affected by that. We talk about autosomal recessive traits. The idea of an autosomal recessive trait is if you have the trait, it has to be homozygous recessive. That's the only time you're going to have a recessive trait is when there isn't a dominant trait. Cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia are two examples. And then X-linked inheritance or sex-linked recessive. Those are what we practiced. That was your homework <coughs> last night at 11.59 p.m. And Gavis yeah, was practicing his sex-linked traits. So we were doing Punnett squares with sex-linked before we asked you to do pedigrees with them. Okay? And hemophilia, colorblindness are the two typical ones that we talk about. And males tend to be more affected by those type of traits because they only need to get one recessive allele. And that recessive allele comes on the X chromosome. Okay? So females are more affected by it than males. So, Mr. DeGrand and I, Friday after school, changed our plans quickly on how we were going to do the day. And we decided that there's a tomorrow, we're going to have you start working through some pedigrees on your own. Um, but we figured that if we just said go, that it wouldn't work out very well. Okay, so what we did is we created this sheet, and the intent is for us to kind of go through and take a look at some traits and characteristics and kind of go and make sure we we're, have some background on it before we move. So a pedigree is kind of like a family tree. It's just a family tree that shows traits. What traits depends upon what we're looking at. Okay. So the intent of this, and there's some things down here that are, you know, squares are males, circles are females, um, shaded have the trait in question. Those are some important things. But I want to add some information to this, just so we can make sure that we have a background. Squares represent males, circles represent females. Okay, so it asks you to label the things that the teacher does. Okay, so females, circles, male, square. This square has the trait. Has the trait. That female does not have the trait. And you can say what trait? I don't care. It doesn't have uh, the genetic trait in question that we're looking at. Shaded has it. Non-shaded does not. Okay, so what if we talk with this being the first generation, this is the second generation, and this is the third generation. What do, we, what do we call this generation, this bottom generation, compared to these, this generation? These, peop, these individuals would call these two their grandparents. grandparents. So we could say that these are then the grandkids, right? These are the grandkids. These are the kids. And then these are the... Uh, I'm sorry. Grandkids parents, grand parents. 
But all those are relative terms, right? <laughs> relative, didn't mean it like that. But these two boys called these two people grandma and grandpa. But what do these boy and girl call these two? Mom and dad, right? So what do these two boy and girl, uh, what do these two boys and girls, boy and girl call these two boy and girl? Son and daughter, right? What does this female call this son? Or this boy, I'm sorry. Nephew. Okay. So they have fluid terms based upon the generation. It's don't get hung up on that. We're not really looking at what do we call each other too much. We're looking more at family lineages. So this has this boy has the trait. So does this boy. This grandson has the trait. This son has the trait. But no one else in the pedigree has the trait. Again, whatever that trait means. All right, so we're going to look at pedigrees, and there are four pedigrees that we have here. And these four pedigrees are the exact same four pedigrees that you'll see two more times on the back. There's three modes of inheritance for pedigrees that we're going to look at. The first one on the bottom of the first page is referring to something called autosomal dominant. And an autosomal dominant trait is a dominant trait that is carried on the autosomes, which is chromosomes number 1 through 22, not the sex chromosomes. So look at the following pedigree to determine if they are consistent with an autosomal dominant trait. Basically, does it work? The wording here is, is it consistent? Because that's the wording you'll see on a test. The idea is, if this pedigree is consistent, every box, every person is possible, it's good. If something breaks down, if something doesn't work, then it's not consistent. And then we circle no because it kind of breaks is kind of the idea. Again, we're not looking to see if this son is really the son of the children. We're trying to determine if the trait we're looking at is an autosomal dominant trait. Does it, could it go through a family lineage if it's an autosomal dominant trait? Okay. So when we go through, we write genotypes next to individuals. Now, I want to, I added this for next year because I thought of this after the fact. If we're, we're going to use big A's and little a's for this, these alleles. Made up letters, it doesn't matter what letters, I'm going to use big A's and little a's. So this trait that we're looking at is a dominant trait. Okay? Who has the trait? Shaded or non-shaded people? Shaded people have the trait in question. So these individuals right here in this pedigree have the, home, the autosomal dominant trait. Now, I added this for next year because I think it's a good starting point. If someone has the trait that is a dominant trait, oops, possible, Genotype for the trait. Okay, so if we we're going to look at any individual who has this, using big A's and little a's, has the dominant trait. Big A's and little a's represent the alleles we're going to use. If they have the trait, what are all the possible genotypes for an individual who has the dominant trait in question? I'll get you started. Big A, little a is a possible outcome because what do we see? The big A or the little a? The big A dominates over the little a, so we see the big A. Or they could be, would they have the dominant trait if they were little a, little a? Or they could be big A, big A. Okay. It's one of the two. Okay. If they're shaded, and we're talking about autosomal dominant, they must be big A, big A, or big A, little a. 
So now what we're trying to do is figure out does this pedigree work or not work? So male, female, female, male, not cr super critical at this point in time, but it's good things to talk about. Males are squares, circles are females. Does this male, dad, have the trait or not have the trait? How do we know? They're not shaded. They must have at least one big A, right? So I'm going to write a big A next to their, their box, because we're trying to determine all the possible genes. Does mom have the trait or not have the trait? No. So, because she, she's not shaded. So she must have at least one big A, okay? And it's a big A blank, big A blank. It's like a to be determined thing. Oops, hang on a second. Sorry, let's start over. Pretend I just didn't say that. I was wrong. Okay, pretend this part's right. All positive genotypes for a dominant allele have to either be big A, little a, or big A, big A. Okay, so if they're shaded, they have to either be big A, little a, or big A, big A. So is this dad, we're starting over, does this dad have the trait in question? No. So does he have the dominant trait? No. no, he has a recessive trait. So because he has a recessive trait, he must be what for a genotype? Little a, little a. Little a. My apologies for my mistake, but let's make sure we get this. Dad does not have the trait, so dad must be homozygous recessive, little a, little a. Does mom have the trait in question? No, she's not shaded. And this is a dominant trait, so her genotype must be little a, little a. Does this daughter have the trait in question? Yes. So she must have at least one big A. She's big A blank. And does this son have the trait in question? And it's a dominant trait, and we know he has it because he's shaded, so he must be big A something. The idea of these are if mom and dad, mom and dad, and I'm going to do a Punnett square a few times. I'm not going to do a lot of them. You are more than welcome to do Punnett squares. I think most people can kind of go through these like in their heads. But if dad is big little a, little a, and mom is little a, little a, and we do a Punnett square, those are the possible outcomes that mom and dad can have. So if mom is little a, little a, and dad is little a, little a, is there any possibility that their children can be anything besides little a, little a? Right? They can only be little a, little a. So is it possible, or is this pedigree consistent? Is it possible for a little a, little a, and a little a, little a parents to have a big A something or a big A something? No, this doesn't work. This is not consistent. And specifically where this breaks down is these two individuals are not possible individuals. The two that I just circled in red. Those children are not possible given the parents' genotypes. Okay? So let's go through and look at this next one. Dad does not have the trait because he's not shaded, so he must be what for a genotype? Little a, little a, little a, little a, and mom does not have the trait because she's not traded, so she must be little a, little a. Daughter does or does not have the trait? Does not. So what's her genotype? Little a, little a, and son has the trait, so he would have to be big a something. Is it possible for a little a, little a, and a little a, little a, mom and dad, to have a little a, little a? Is it possible for a little a, little a, mom, dad, and a little a, little a, mom, to have this daughter who's little a, little a? That one's good. Is it possible for a little a, little a, and a little a, little a, to have a big A something? No. No. This is not possible. This is not consistent for a autosomal dominant trait. So if your parents don't have a trait 
and you do have the trait, whatever the trait you're looking at is not autosomal dominant. That's what we're saying. We're not saying they're not mom and dad. We're just saying that trait is not autosomal dominant. Dad does or does not have the trait. So he's what? Big A something. Mom does or does not have the trait? Does. So she's big A something. Okay. Daughter does or does not have the trait? So she's big A something. Son has or does not have the trait? So what's son's genotype? Has to be a little a, little a, little a. Has to be a little a, little a. Is it possible for this son, little a, little a, to be born of a big A something, big A something parents? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Okay, and I'll do the Punnett square for this one really quick. If dad is big A something and mom is big A something, well, we know. what those Punnett squares look like thus far. If this box were to be little a, little a, is that a possible outcome? Yes, as long as mom and dad both were big A, little a, big A, little a. What's the term we use for a big A, little a? Homozygous or heterozygous? They're heterozygous. So mom and dad are both heterozygous for the trait. They have the trait, and they're heterozygous for the trait. Okay. So is it possible for a big A little big A little A to have a big A little A? Yes, as long as their second letters are little A's. A little A little A is possible if that and that are both little A's. Is it possible for a big A little A and a big A little A to have a big A something? Yeah. Do we know what that second letter is? Not yet. If we had some more like family trees, like we saw with the, the children of this daughter were, maybe. It's a big A question mark right now. It could be big A, big A. It could be big A, little A. We don't know at this point in time. But we do know that this one is a possibility. This is consistent. This pedigree is consistent for an autosomal dominant trait. Why don't you try this last one? Fill in what the what the parents are, the letters that you know. Does this work? Does this not? Thumbs up, it works. Thumbs down, doesn't work. Consistent, in not consistent. I see some no thumbs yet. Maybe I'm a little too early. Okay, but I'll, I'll pause for a moment. All right, let's work through this. Dad has or doesn't have. So what their genotype is what to start with? For big A something. Mom has or doesn't have? So her genotype is? Has to be little a, little a. Daughter has or doesn't have? Has. So big A something. Son has or doesn't have? Big A something. You can say, but don't we know? Yes, we do know. But yes, we'll get started with because they're shaded, it's big A something. Now, what does mom, what is mom going to pass on? A little a, okay? Does mom have any other allele to pass on? She's got to pass on a little a. So, 
what's dad going to pass on, a big A or whatever that second letter is? We don't know quite yet, perhaps. Is it possible for a big A something and a little a little a to have a big A something? Sure. Do we know what the second letter is? Where'd this big A come from, dad or mom? How do you know? Right, he's the only one that has it. So what is the second letter coming from? So do we know that second letter? And what does it have to be? It has to be a little bit, right? Same thing with his son. Where'd the big A come from? So what does mom have to give? A little bit, okay? So we know that dad, so if mom is homozygous recessive, we could get heterozygous. Is this possible? Are these children possible based upon what we know of so far? Do we know what the second letter is? It could be, right? We don't know what it, like statistic, it's a big A question mark. If it was big A, big A, then we would get 100% of the time heterozygous, right? Big A, big A, cross with a little a, little a, every single child is going to be a big A, little a. If dad was heterozygous though, big A, little a, cross with a little a, little a, Statistically, we should get half of the offspring should be uh, little a, little a. Statistically. Do Punnett squares guarantee outcomes? No, they give possible outcomes. Is it possible to, for you to flip a coin twice in a row and flip heads two times in a row? Does that mean it's a double-headed coin, though? No, right? So it's still a big A question mark. We don't know for sure what that is. But yes, it could, the trait in question could be an autosomal dominant. It's possible. This is consistent. This one works. Questions about that before we hopefully forget almost everything we just talked about? OK. Then the reason I say and forget almost everything we talk about is because now we are switching modes of inheritance. So don't forget about the circles, don't forget about the squares, don't forget about shaded having the trade, don't forget about fathers, mother, father, sons, daughters, stuff like that. But forget about the letters that you wrote with shaded versus non-shaded, because that was a different mode of inheritance. If it's autosomal dominant, then big, shaded means big A something. This is not autosomal dominant. This is autosomal recessive. Okay? So forget all that stuff about big A's being shaded. So switch gears. And that's what messes with people a lot is this switching of the gears. So autosomal recessive is a recessive trait that's carried on the autosomes, which is chromosomes 1 through 22. Look at the following to determine which is possible to uh, circle if it does. Okay. Again. For autosomal recessive, it's recessive all possible genotypes. If they have the recessive trait, what are all the possible genotypes for an individual using big A's and little a's? What are all the possible genotypes for an individual that have the trait using big A's and little a's? If they have the recessive trait, what are all the possible genotypes that they could be? Little a, little a. Are there any other possible genotypes you can see the recessive and only the recessive? That's it. Okay. For, so when it's autosomal recessive, if we see that they have the trait, they are going to be little a, little a. How do we know if they have the trait? They're shaving. Good. So let's, this is the exact same pedigree as on the front, but now we are only looking for autosomal <laughs> recessive. Let's start with the shaded. Let's start with this daughter. Does she or does she not have the trait? She has the trait, and we know she has the trait because she is shaded. So what is her genotype? Little a, little a. What's the son's genotype? Because does he have the trait or not have the trait? He has the trait because he's shaded. Does dad have the trait or not have the trait? No. Why not shaded? So dad has to be, at least has to have it 
at least one big A. Okay? So not shaded must be a big A something. Mom does not have the trait. Must be a big A something. Is it possible for a big A something, dad, and mom who's big A something, to have two children that are little a, little a, and little a, little a? Yes, if, if they're both big A's, little a's, right? Punnett square, big A, little a. Okay, if, if they were both heterozygous, they could come up with that. So is it possible or is it consistent? The answer is yes. This is consistent for an autosomal recessive trait. It's possible. It could work. Now, statistically, 50% should be, I'm sorry, 75% should not be shaded and 25 should be shaded, but it's possible. If that box exists in a Punnett square, it is a possibility. Next one. Son has the trait or doesn't have the trait? So he has what genotype? Hey, little a, little a. Sister, his sister, has the trait or doesn't have the trait? Doesn't. So she is big A something. Dad has or doesn't have? So he's big A something. What about mom? Big A something. Big A something. Now, is it possible for a big A something and a big A something to have a big A something? Yeah. Yes, right? Is it possible for a big A something, big A something to have a little a, little a? Mm -hmm. Yes. If dad is heterozygous big A, little a, and mom is also heterozygous big A, little a. Okay? Do we know what the something is for sister? No. no. Could this be big A, big A? Yeah. Could a big A come from mom and from dad? Yeah. Could, there, could this letter also be a little a? Yeah. Yes, and based upon the information that we have, that's all we can say is she's big A something. We don't know what that second letter is, and we don't need to know it. We'd have to look at her children to potentially figure that out. Yeah, it has or doesn't have? So, dad is little a, little a. Mom has or doesn't have? So she is daughter. Has or doesn't have? So she's and son has or doesn't have? So he's big A something. Is it possible for a little a, little a, and a little a, little a to have a little a, little a? Yes. Yes. Daughter is good. Is it possible for little a, little a, and a little a, little a to have a big A something? No. This right here doesn't work. This is not possible. This is not, not consistent. This one is where it breaks down. I'm not saying that's not the sun. I'm just saying the trait that they're looking at is an autosomal recess. Try the last one on your own.
Looking at the slides right now. Yeah, but we've been on those slides for quite some time now. Right in the back. We're halfway through. All right, so let's take a look at the fourth one. Oh, here, thumbs up. Yes is consistent. Thumbs down, inconsistent, doesn't work. I see a lot of thumbs up. I like that. So dad doesn't have the trait, so dad is a little a little. Mom, I'm sorry, dad does have the trait, which means he's little a little a. Mom doesn't have the trait, so therefore she's big a something. Daughter has the trait, little a little a. Son has the trait, little a little a. Is it possible for a little a little a and a big a something to have a little a little a? Yes, as long as mom is big A, little a. Is it possible for a big A, I'm sorry, little a, little a, and a big A, little a to have a little a, little a? Yes, as long as mom, once again, is heterozygous. Okay, so that one works as well. Questions about autosomal recessive. So again, we're switching brain thoughts. If it's dominant, shaded means big A something. If it's autosomal recessive, shaded means little a, little a. The last mode of inheritance that we're going to look at today is sex-linked recessive. That's what yesterday, last, the homework that was due last night, that's what that was looking at was sex-linked recessive. Things carried on the X chromosome, and it's recessive. So our three possible alleles are X big A, X little a, or Y. Those are the three alleles that are possible outcomes based upon sex-linked recessive. It's only carried on the X. These are X links, just for the record. Okay. So, again, the only time we see the recessive trait is in the absence of a dominant trait. So, what are all the possible genotypes that a female could have if we're using X big A's, X little A's, and Y's? Female is gonna be XX, and if she has the sex link recessive trait, what are the A's going to be on the X's? Big A's or little A's in which combination? She has a recessive trait. So big A's represent the dominant allele. Little A's represent recessive allele. Okay, so she's got to be X, little A, X, little A. Is there any other possible genotypes that mo uh, a female could have and still have the trait? Nope. What about for a male? X, Y, it's only on the X cr uh, chromosome. So what's the allele that has to go on the X in order to have the recessive trait? X, little. Those are the possible alleles if they're shaded. So when I look at sex link traits, now the, the males versus females matter. I start by filling in the sex chromosomes. That's the first thing I do. I fill in the circles being XX and the squares being XY. Okay. So that's where I start. Does this male have the trait? Does dad have the trait? No. So dad must be X, big A, Y. Does mom have the trait? No. So she must be X, big A, X, something. Does daughter have the trait? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So because daughter has the trait, then this must be the daughter's genotype. If son had the trait, then this must be the son's genotype. But we're talking about the daughter. So the daughter is X little a, X little a. Does the son have the trait or not have the trait? Has the trait, so he's X little a, Y. 
Now let's talk about possibilities. Is it possible for dad, who's x big A, x or x big A y, to have a daughter, or, and mom, who's x big A something, to have a daughter who's x little a x little a? No, because what is? Can you guarantee that dad passed on? Which one did dad pass on? The x or the y chromosome? Right, because there isn't one. We'll pick up tomorrow. Have a good day, everyone.